Hi, I'm Matthew Coast, head dating coach and founder at CommitmentConnection.com. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you, uh, do not marry a man who has these six habits. So there are six habits that I want to talk about of uh, a man that you do not want to marry a guy like this. So if this is your first time to this channel, make sure that you go and hit the subscribe button to get more videos on how to have the relationship that you've always wanted. So what are some red flags, some big red flags that you should look for in a guy that you're looking to potentially marry? Here's the first one. Number one is that uh, he's really narrow-minded. So if a guy um, isn't open to experiencing new things or kind of going outside his box or uh, looking at different perspectives, um, you know, as as long as you're not also narrow-minded, I mean, if you're narrow-minded, maybe that's a great guy for you. But, uh, you know, usually it's it's going to create a ton of different amounts of friction in your future, and there's a high probability that you're going to be in lots of fights, and it's going to be really difficult to get anywhere with this guy or uh, have the relationship that you really want. Habit number two is that he intentionally breaks all of your boundaries. And so, uh, you know, your boundaries are what determine how valuable you are to a man. And so if you've got a guy that's constantly challenging those boundaries and breaking those boundaries and doing it intentionally, um, it, it's just going to be really painful for you in the long run um, trying to trying to maintain a relationship with this guy. Uh, th you know, this is a path that could go uh, into emotional abuse or even possibly physical abuse. Um, it's really hard to maintain a relationship with someone who's constantly breaking your boundaries. I know uh, several people who have been in relationships like these and they never end up lasting because, um, you know, it, there's no respect there. There's no, um, uh, there, there's no respect for uh, you as a human being. There's no respect for um, you know, what you want and you end up just kind of getting, um, uh, shat on <laughs> the entire relationship and, uh, it, it ends up being really difficult. Habit number three that you want to watch out for is a liar. So lying is kind of like, it's, um, you know, there, there's a, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people that'll say that there's some kind of psychological, like, um, uh, kind of dysfunction with people that lie. But really, I think, um, you know, part of that is also just immature behavior, right? So children um, lie a lot. Of, you know, they, they feel that it's okay to lie. Um, and when you become an adult, it's about kind of taking responsibility for yourself, uh, especially as a man. It's about taking responsibility. It's about owning things. It's about being honest. Um, and, uh, Dating or being in a relationship with a liar, you know, especially long-term marriage with somebody that lies, it's like, how can you trust them? It's like, you know, how can you, um, uh, you know, how can you know what's even going on in the relationship? It's, uh, you know, I, I know there's some great people out there that are liars um, that that do a lot of great things, and at the same time, you know, every relationship, even you know. Uh, platonic relationships that um, I've had with uh, people that are liars. It's like, you know, it, it's just something that can't last for me for a long time because there's just, you know, it's like um, you can say something to them and it's like, it's like you're talking to a crazy person or something because they, they'll lie so much about so many different things that you don't even know really what's going on. You don't even know really what your relationship is to them because it could mean something completely different than what you think it means because of all the jumbled up lies that they have in their head about it. So habit number four is the promise breaker. And you've probably experienced people like this in your life before. You know, people that are like, you know, they promise the world, but then they, you know, don't deliver anything. <laughs> it's, um, they, you know, and then they try to make you feel, uh, well, it ends up making you feel stupid and it ends up making you feel disappointed. It ends up making you feel like, um, like you were scammed out of something. 
um, you know, this is like the, uh, the, the used car salesman of, of uh, personalities. You know, one of the things that a lot of women do is they end up falling in love with a man's potential. And my suggestion is that you try as much as you can not to do that. You know, um, if you get into a relationship with a guy who makes lots of big promises and then doesn't fulfill on them, um, you are going to be really, really disappointed in your future unless you know that you just love the guy for who he is, even with his stupid promises. Um, and usually that's not the case for most of the women uh, that I talk to um, in our community. So habit number five is the emotionally abusive guy. And so, you know, this is obviously a big problem. Um, I mean, physical abuse is one of those things where you can see it, right? Emotional abuse is a little bit more subtle. Um, it's not something that you can necessarily know off the get-go. And it might be, you might be deep in a relationship before you start realizing that a guy's emotionally abusive. And so, you know, things that emotionally abusive guys do or, you know, one, he, um, you know, he insults you a lot or two, he might like, um, when you need him the most, he might not really be there for you and he might not really like, uh, connect with you. Um, or, or try to support you and what's going on with you. Another sign of emotional abuse is a guy that kind of punishes you a lot and really it's kind of this manipulation thing to try to get you to do what he wants you to do. So habit number six is the guy with the drug or alcohol problem that only seems to get worse and doesn't seem to get better. Usually people that have serious uh, alcohol or drug problems don't even realize that they have serious alcohol or drug problems. And they're like, yeah, what, what, yeah, what, what are you talking about? What's the problem here? And, um, but you notice like, uh, I've, I actually had a, a step parent that was like this, who, um, he used to like drink in the car. I mean, he was always drunk, you know, never knew that he had a problem. Um, and you know it's it's a it's a really really painful thing because uh, they end up putting that drug above uh, everything else. I was um, hanging out with uh, uh, a really really close friend of mine not too long ago who um, is a severe alcoholic and uh, he's been sober for a while now. But you know just talking to him about um, alcohol was just this wild crazy ride into this like alternate universe i mean the guy was like telling me these these romance stories that he had in his mind about you know drinking it was like oh yeah you know i can't wait until i drink again you know it'll be this time and you know my my dream is that you know i can just get drunk and take an uber down to the bar and then you know get really drunk at a at a bar and then just take an Uber home. And I'm like, holy shit, is that, that's your dream? <laughs> like, man, that's crazy. And so um, if you uh, end up dating or getting married to a guy that has a serious drug or alcohol problem, you're, always, you're never going to be the priority. You will never, ever be the priority in his life because his priority will always be to get high. And that is a very, very painful thing to experience. Thanks for watching this video. If you're ready to know exactly what to say and do to attract the man and the relationship you've always wanted, click on the button on the right-hand side of this video and go to our website.